Hey everyone, Case here. Now in this video I'm going to show you how to make a very professional, good looking website for your business or for a personal website. Now in this video I'm, I've created a mock a boat rental business since it is summer and all. So I've constructed this very professional, good looking boat rental business and of course for you, you can create a website for any business that you're in. Now this website is going to work on iPads, it's going to work on iPhones, it's going to work on Android devices as well as Macs and desktop computers. So in this video I'm going to walk you step by step through everything there is involved in setting a website up from scratch for your business. So let's get started. Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you how to create a very professional website for your business or your personal website. So I'm going to walk you step by step through everything involved in setting a website like this one up today. I'm going to show you how to add slider images onto your homepage. I'm also going to show you how to add text next to these slider images and show you how to add larger images to your sliders. So for this business, I've set up kind of a mock example of a business that is in the boat rental industry. So we are renting boats and we're doing boat excursions and stuff like that. And of course your business can be totally different than this. I'm just serving as an example. I forgot to say I'm also going to show you how to actually add videos into your sliders as well. So since I'm in the boat rental business I thought it made sense to add a Bob Marley video into the sliders here. So I'm going to show you, like I said, how to add all of this content here. I will show you how to add pages onto your website. I'll show you how to add a Google Map here. My mock business is going to be located in Key West, Florida. I will show you how to add a blog onto your website. And I'm also going to show you how to add some widgets onto your website. As well as a professional logo to use for your website. So let's get started putting everything involved in our website together right now. And let's take a look at the steps that we'll go through in order to construct this. So let's take a look at the steps that we're going to walk through today in order to build this website. So here I have listed out the steps that we're going to need to walk through. Number one, we're going to need to go out and get a domain name. So we're going to have to go out and register our domain name. Now this is like our URL. This is like google.com or yahoo.com. This is where our visitors are going to find us on the internet. So this domain name should relate to what your business is about or what the content on your site is related to. So that's the first thing we're going to need to do. The next thing we're going to gonna need to do is we're going to need to go out and get web hosting. And what web hosting is, it's basically like a computer that's on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and this is where we store all of our images and our content that's on our website. It's stored on this computer that's on 24 hours a day. So all of the websites you see on the internet have web hosting and we are going to need to go out and get web hosting as well in order to get our site on the internet. The third thing we need to do is we need to go out and we're going to have to install WordPress. Um, and we're going to walk through a one-click install of WordPress. Uh, and just to tell you what WordPress is, it's basically a content management system, a CMS, um, which makes it incredibly easy to add new content to our website and update all of the information on our website uh, from the back end. Um, as we move further into this video, I'll show you more in depth what WordPress is and the capabilities of WordPress. The next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to install a very popular a, uh, theme uh, for our WordPress site. It's going to be very business related and it's going to be a very professional uh, looking theme. The next thing we're going to need to do is just we're going to be adding content to our website. So I'm going to show you how to add pages to your uh, website. I'm going to show you how to add widgets to your website. Everything 
entailing your website. I'm going to walk you through getting it all set up today. So let's get started putting all of this together. Okay, so the first things that we need to do in order to get our website online is we're going to need to go out and get a domain name and get web hosting. So the company that I have always gone through when registering domain names and getting web hosting is HostGator. So if you go to HostGator.com, we can get our domain name and get web hosting. So once you're at HostGator.com, you'll want to click on the web hosting tab right here. And you'll notice that HostGator does offer several different web hosting plans. The hosting plan that I always go with usually is the baby plan. Um, this is for multiple reasons, but namely because the baby plan allows you to host, host multiple domains under the one hosting account. So you can host several different websites under this one web hosting plan, which I think is really cool. And I think it's also a really great price for such a reputable company. So, and the length I always go with is the monthly plan. Now, it would probably make more sense if I were to sign up for a few years with, with them as the price does come down, but the monthly plan is just what I've always gone with. So I'm gonna click on monthly, I'm gonna click order now. And now we're gonna to come to our order form. So in this field right here is where we're gonna to need to register the domain name. So depending on the business that you have or the website that you're trying to create, this domain name should be you know, it should relate to your business or the content that you're going to provide to your visitors on your site. So for me, this, I'm just serving as an example, this can be anything. New professional website, which I will register. Now, if you already do have a domain name, say that you've registered already with GoDaddy, then you'll select this field and you'll enter in the domain name that you already have with GoDaddy right here after selecting this. But since I'm registering this domain name, I will select that. And let's go down. Let's make sure that we have our baby plan here. And we'll want to enter a username and security pen. So I can do that. And here is where we enter in our billing information. We'll just need to fill all of this out. Now, if you're outside of the US, HostGator does also accept PayPal. And we can go down. Now, there is also a field here for a coupon code. Now, HostGator offers you already 20% off. I have a coupon code that will actually save you 25% off. And that coupon code is my Pro site 25. So that's my pro site 25. Now, if you're going to sign up with HostGator anyways, I'd appreciate it if you do use this coupon code because HostGator does pay me a small commission fee, and this allows me to continue making these step by step guides uh, videos. So let's make sure that we're all set here. I always uncheck these hosting add ons. So let's uncheck those. Let's validate our coupon code, MyProSite25. And we can now see that we're getting 25% off rather than the standard 20% off. So everything looks good. We'll click I have read and agree. And we will click Create Account. And after we click Create Account with HostGator, we will get a thank you page. And from there, HostGator is going to send us an email. So I have the email that HostGator will be sending us pulled up here. And there's a lot of very valuable, useful information that you're going to need in this email. Right away, we're going to need this link in your control panel. So I'm going to click on your control panel here. And that's going to take us into our control panel. You're going to need to actually log into your control panel. So you're going to grab your username that HostGator gives you and your password right here. So once you type that in and get logged into your control panel, you will come to this page. And basically your control panel with HostGator is where you can do a lot of really cool things. You can do 
all sorts of different tweaks to your website. But what we're going to do here right away in this control panel is we're going to need to install WordPress. So if we scroll down, we will come to Software Services, and we're going to click on Quick Install right here. And here in the left menu, we'll see WordPress. Let's click on WordPress. And let's click Continue. And let's make sure that the domain that we've just registered appears in this field right here. And that is what I have registered, which is great. And for admin email, we're going to need to enter in all of this information. So I will type my information in. And blog title, this is just the name of your website. So boat rentals, admin user. This can be your name, this can be admin. I'm just going to use it as admin for now. And then we'll type our first and last name in. And then let's click install now. Okay, it says congratulations, your installation is ready. Now, this will probably take about two or three hours for WordPress to fully install on our website. So right now, I'm just gonna take a little break and wait for WordPress to fully install on this website. And when I come back, we're going to finish installing our theme and adding all of our content to our new professional website. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now that it's been a few hours since WordPress has installed on our website, let's go to our URL and see if WordPress has installed properly. So minus the bestprofessionalwebsite.com and we can see that WordPress has installed on the website. This is the default look that you will get after installing WordPress. So this is great. The next thing we want to do is we want to log into our dashboard, so our back end of our website. So after we installed WordPress, it gave us this login information. Now it should have also sent you an email as well, but I can pull my password here so I can log into the dashboard of our website. So I'm going to copy that password and I'll remember admin. And then I'm just going to go to our, the URL that we've just registered, backslash wp-admin. And that'll get us to the area where we can log into our dashboard. So I'm just going to type my username as admin and the password that I've just copied. So I'm going to log in. Okay, and now we are in our dashboard of our website. So this is the back end of our website. This is the area that we're going to be editing everything that there is entailing our website. So we're going to be adding new information, new content, new pages, updating our content from this dashboard. And now the first thing that I generally like to do when I log into a dashboard for the first time is to change that password. Um, so and now to do that, we just go up to users and let's click on users and let's click on admin and let's scroll down here to the new password information so let's type in a password that we can actually remember update okay so now we have updated our password the next thing that I generally like to do is I want to show you how our website looks right now the best. So here is the URL we've just registered. Now you can notice that at the beginning of the URL there is no www dot, which maybe is a bit weird. Um, for me, I'm a little bit picky. I like to have the www in front of the URL. It just looks a bit more professional to me. And this is so easy to fix that I see no reason in not adding the www there. So to do that, let's go back into our dashboard and let's go to settings. And here we can see WordPress address, site address. Um, these two fields right here 
All we need to do to fix this is just type www dot, then our domain name, and in the next field, let's type www dot, and then our domain name is there. And make sure that is accurate because there will be a problem if, it, if it's not your actual domain name with the www in front of it right there. So now that we have that fixed, let's go down and hit save. And let's make sure that the www was in fact added to our URL. So let's go to our domain name, press enter, and we can see that the www has been added into our URL. Okay. Now that we're moving right along, the next thing on our agenda today is we are going to need to install, install our theme for our website. So this is one of the most professional business related themes that I've seen out there right now. Uh, I think it's a really attractive theme that I'm really excited about. So we're going to need to go out and get this theme and it is a free theme that we can find at wootheemes.com. So that's woo, W-O-O, themes.com. So once you come to this website, we'll click on themes, and let's click on view all our themes. And let's search free and business and see if this theme comes up. Swatch. Yes, this is the theme that I really like that we'll be using today. And you can, of course, use your own theme. There are, you know, WordPress has thousands of free themes that they offer. This is just the theme that I think really fits for the style of website we are creating today in this video. So let's click download now and free download. Okay, and also if you're not a member at Woo Themes, it is free to, to uh, join Woo Themes. So you'll need to create an account actually. And like I said, it's free to join and you'll have access to this free theme. So now that I see that this has been downloaded into a zip file, I will go back into our dashboard and I'm going to go to Appearance, Themes, Install Themes, and I'm going to click on upload and I'm just going to drag this right here and make sure that you are uploading a zip file that this swatch has downloaded as a zip and that you're going to be uploading this zip file into your dashboard. So that we click install now It may take a minute. Okay, theme installed successfully. After you have this screen, we're going to click activate. Okay. And now we can see that we do have a new look in our dashboard. Now let's go take a look at our live site and see how this new theme has changed the look and feel of our site. So let me come back here and I'm going to refresh this. And we can see that we have a completely new design that we've just uploaded as a theme into WordPress. So this is actually the design that we're going to be working with today. So let's jump right into adding all of our content onto our website. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go into our dashboard and we need to create a few pages. So let's go to pages and we can see that WordPress has by default added this sample page. What we can do to this is we can just trash that. So after we throw that one in the trash, let's go up here and click add new. So we're going to want to create two pages right away. The first page we want to create is called home. So we'll title that as home and we'll hit publish. Then we'll want to add a new page and we're going to title this new page blog and then come back over here and hit publish. And 
after we've done that, we need to go down here to Settings, Reading. And then it's really important that on this field here, Front Page Displays, we select a static page. And the front page we want to display is going to be Home. And our Post Page, where if we do have a blog on our website, will be where all of our blog posts appear under our blog section of our website. So we're going to select Blog here. And then I'm going to hit Save Changes. Okay, and let's go to our website and let's refresh and see if it looks any different. And we can, we can see that the website is starting to look a bit different. One thing that you probably notice right away is that there are two homes that are appearing in our top menu, which is very normal and it is an easy fix. So we're going to go ahead and fix that right now. We need to go back into our dashboard. Let's go to Appearance and let's go to Menus. And it's asking here for us to create a menu name. And we can, of course, just title this Menu. And what this is going to do is when we add new pages to our website, it's going to allow us to rearrange the pages in the preference we would like the pages to appear. So say we want Blog to appear here and About Me to appear here. This menu section in the dashboard is going to make it very easy to, to do that. So once we've saved this new menu, we're going to come here in, in the primary menu, select Menu, and I'm going to hit Save. And let's go down, and then the pages that we've added so far are Blog and Home. And since we'd like to add these pages that we've just created, Blog and Home, into our navigation on our website, we will want to select these pages and add them to the menu. So now as we continue to add pages throughout this video to our website, it is really easy to, you know, like I was saying, drop and drag the pages in the, you know, in the order or your preference that you'd like to have the pages appear on your website. So for instance, we would like probably home to be the first page that our visitors come to, and from there go to blog as the next page. So let's click Save Menu. And that is saving. And let's go to our lab site and let's refresh. Okay, and we can now see that there is just one home uh, that appears in our navigation as well as a blog, which is fantastic. The next things that I would like to do are is the adding sliders aspect of this uh, video. So I want to show you how to add really attractive, really enticing sliders, images, onto your home page. So this theme allows us a really easy way to add these images into the slider function. So let's start adding these sliders. What we need to do here in order to make our sliders show first is let's click on Swatch here in the menu. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to go into our options here in Woo Themes and I will click on Home Page. So once I click on Home Page here in the menu, in this drop down I'm going to select Home for Home Page Content. Once I select that I will hit Save All Changes. Okay, now that we've done that in our left menu now, let's go to Slides. And let's start adding our sliders. So I'm going to add new here. And I can just title this Boat Rentals since I'm creating a mock boat rental business or boat excursion uh, business. And I have a few images that I have found on iStock Photo that I'm going to use for this mock business that I have on my computer now. Now I've already uploaded this image into the library here in our dashboard, but for you to upload an image from your computer onto your dashboard, you'll want to click on Upload Files and select Files, and you'll find your, your image from your computer. So for me, I'll go to Media Library, select the image, 
and I want it to be full size and I don't want this image to link to anything so I'm going to select none there and I'm going to insert that image into post okay so now that that is there I'm going to hit publish now there's a couple cool things that we can do with our sliders that I will show you but let's go to our live site and see what this has done on the site so let's go to home okay and we can see now that we have added one slider onto our home page which is really cool now what I was saying is we can add if you have larger images you can of course add a large photo into your sliders now with the small images what this theme allows us to do is to place some text next to the slider let me show you what I'm saying. I'm going to come grab some dummy text. Lorem ipsum. So I'm going to grab some dummy text and show you what I am saying. So I'm just going to copy this. Copy. And I'll go back into our dashboard and I will paste this text. And I would like the text to be aligned right. And then I'm going to update. And I will update this page, this slider. And let's come to our live site and refresh. Okay, fantastic. And now we can have this either, you know, their text either left aligned or right aligned. So this is our first slider. So moving right along, we will add our next slider. So I'm going to come up here and add new. So we can title this just Boat Rentals 2. OK, and we, yeah, we can just walk through the same process that we walked through the, with the first slider. So I'm going to hit Add Media here and add a new slider image to this slider. So I've already loaded this image into my library and my dashboard right here and of course if you need to upload an image from your computer just go to upload files select files and go there mine is in the media library and I'm going to select this image for my slider and for alignment I'm going to select none I don't want that to link to anything again and I want that to be full size again so I'm going to just select insert into post and then I'm going to paste some dummy text here next to it again. And let's align that text again so that it looks professional. I'm going to left align this one to show you how that looks. So I'm going to hit update. So we can see that the text has been left aligned. And I will hit update. Now if we go to our site, let's go to visit site. X out of here. We can now see that our first slider is here and we have just added our second slider. So coming right along, I will add one more slider here. Let's go back into our dashboard. And you can of course go back into your dashboard by using this menu up here and selecting dashboard. And we will go back to slides and I'm going to add one more slider. Boat Rentals 3. And same process here. I'm going to go to Add Media. I'm going to have to upload this file from my computer actually. So I'm going to select Files. And I'm going to select this image that I'd like to have as a slider. So there it is. I don't want no, none alignment there. So that's good. I don't want these to link to anything. But you can, of course, link these to a certain page on your website, if you like. And I want that to be full size. And I'm going to insert that into post. I'm going to add a bit of dummy text here again. So I'm just going to select there and paste. And let's left align this one again. Update. And let's publish that. 
and let's go check out our site. So you can see that we have three sliders and these images will rotate naturally for your visitors. You can also select the images here at the bottom here. So, and like I said, if you have larger images, you can fill up this whole space with your image. But it's, I think it's also cool, a cool feature that this theme offers is that it allows you to write a little bit of text next to your slider images. Now, one more cool thing about this theme, that it, what it allows us to do with these sliders is that it actually allows us to place a video into our sliders as well. And I wanna show you how to do this before I stop talking about the sliders. So the first thing I want to do is I want to grab a video to add into our slider section of our website. And now since we're doing a boat rental, boat excursion type business today, I'm going to grab a related video from YouTube. So I'm going to go to youtube.com and I'm going to search Bob Marley. And Bob Marley, Is This Love? That is the song that I would like to use. So. We don't need to listen to it right now. And to put this on our website, we need to click on share and embed. And we need to copy this code that it gives us right here. So once we have that copied, let's go back into our dashboard. So let me go back to our dashboard. And I'm going to go to slides. And I'm going to add a new slide. I'm going to title this Bob Marley. And we can see that we don't need to add any text or any content right here unless you'd like to add some content next to your video. But we can see that this theme allows us this field here where we can embed this video code from YouTube. So this is the field we were going to want to paste that code into. So we can paste that there and then we'll hit publish. Now, it's very important that after you do this, that you go to um, you go to Swatch Themes right here. We need to make sure that, let's go to Homepage Slider, that we have selected how many sliders we want to appear on our website. So since this will be our fourth slider we'd like to appear, we need to select that there will be four sliders we would like rotating. Since we select four there, we're going to hit Save Changes. And then we can go visit our site. And we can see that we do have four sliders, so one, two, three, and four. And here is our video that is the same type of theme that our website kind of is revolving around. And so now that we have that there, we can, let's go ahead and we can pause this video here. So we have all of our sliders situated in the correct format we'd like to have. Now we need to add an About Us page. Since we are a business, we'd like our visitors to know a little bit about us. So let's go to our dashboard and let's go to Pages and let's go to Add New here. And I'm going to title this page about us and since I'm just serving as an example here I'm just gonna grab a little bit of more of this dummy text from Lorem Ipsum copy that and a little bit about us here oh what did I just do Now, I really like WordPress and editing all of my content and information in WordPress because I think it's so similar to Microsoft Word, how there's absolutely like no coding involved in using WordPress. It really is just like you know writing a paper or updating a Word document. Just so easy. All the tools are here to change your font and make your font bold or whatever you'd like. So I'm going to publish this page here. And then I want to view page. Okay. Now, one thing that we notice here is that About Us is not in our top navigation. And that is because we have created the menus. 
So we need to add About Us into our menu. So since we've just created that page, let's go to Appearance, Menus, and let we, we see that About Us is in Pages now. Let's select About Us, and let's add that to our menu. And I think About Us should be right under Home. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to Save. And now we can visit our site. So we see Home, About Us, and Blog. So let's click on About Us. And you can see that this is the page we've just created. So this will be the page that you tell your visitors who you are and why you're there. So we're really coming along here. Now another thing that is really popular for businesses is to add a Google Map and embed this Google Map onto your website that shows your location to your visitors. And you can either create an, a contact us page or a location page or a lot of people actually like to just embed a Google Map on their About Us page which I will do. So to do that, we will go to maps.google.com and we'll grab a Google Map of our location. Now since I'm in New York, I can... I think it might be more interesting to grab a Google Map for Key West, let's say, since we're in, a, in the boat rental business. There's key. Oops, we're not in New York. Key West, Florida is where I was saying. So there's that. And once you type in your address here in this Google Maps, you'll want to select this link here. So let's click on that. And let's select this. So all you got to do is just click there. And I'm going to copy this HTML right here and I'm going to go back into our dashboard. So I'm going to go back dashboard and I'm going to go to our page. So we want this in the About Us page. I'm going to click About Us and I guess we would like this probably at the bottom of the page. Now when we do insert this HTML code that we've grabbed from Google, make sure to click on text here right here. So let's click on text and let's go back down to where we would like the code to appear. And let's paste that there. So after we paste that, let's go to update. And we should have a Google Maps. So let's go visit our site again. And we're going to go back to our About Us page. Okay, and our Google Map is here. So we are in Key West, Florida, is where this business is. And here is the text about us. Another thing that you may have noticed is that the page is a little bit uh, small. It's, it's not quite wide enough. It doesn't fit, it doesn't take the entire page. So that is an aesthetic thing that we can fix as well. Let's go back in our dashboard again. And I'm going to go back to each page that we want there to be more width in the page. So I'm going to click on About Us. And then I'm going to go down. Under Layout, I'm going to select this layout right here. And I'm going to select Full Width under Template. And I'm going to Update. I'm going to do this for each page. So on home, I'm going to do the same thing. Going to select this layout here. I'm going to select full width as the template. And I'm going to update. And the next page that we have is our blog page. So I'm going to click on that. Select this layout. Full width template. And I'm going to update. So let's go back to our website 
and let's go to our About Us page. And we can see that the width of our page has completely transformed. And we are now using you know, a full, our full amount of room that we're given. So we've done that. Let's click on Blog as well. Let's see that we are ready to start adding blog posts here, which I'll show you how to do. But let's go back to our home page. And let's make sure that we're providing the full amount of information that we should be giving out to our visitors right when they come to our web page. The home page is probably your most important page on your website, so this is going to be a really, really crucial page for you to draw the attention of your visitors. So this is really what, where you want to grab, you know, grab their attention. So you're going to want to write some really great content that is going to, you know, grab them to to contact you in order to book your services. So. Now, since I am, of course, just serving as an example, I'm just going to grab some dummy text here so we can see how our homepage looks with text in it. So let's close some of these windows here. So let's go back to our page. And I'm going to go to our homepage. And here is where we will enter in our content. Now, of course, in our homepage, you can also add images. So if you select Add Media, you can grab images to add onto your homepage as well, you know, next to your content. Here's our content. Let's update that content. And let's see how this looks on our live site. So here's our sliders. And here is our content. Like I said, we can have images, you know, maybe right here. Uh, the wrap around the text and now I'm going to show you next how to add a blog post and I'm also going to show you how to add a couple useful widgets that will probably be quite necessary for you. So let's go ahead and add that blog post. So I'm going to go back into the dashboard. I'm going to go to posts actually now. So I click on posts. And hello world, this is a default blog post that WordPress gives you automatically. So I'm going to trash that. And I'm going to go up here and click add new post. My new website. Welcome everyone to the new site. We are ready to start taking people voting. So here is our blog post. I'm going to hit publish here. Okay, and let's go back to, let's click on blog here and make sure that the post appears under the blog. So here's the blog section of our website. And here is where all of our blog posts are going to appear. So this is our first blog post. When we create another blog post, this one will be moved down, and so on. So that is great. Okay, a couple more things to do here in this video to finish creating our website. So some of the last things I want to walk you through are the widgets that WordPress gives us with this theme and that WordPress gives us by default. So if we go back into our dashboard, we can go to Appearance here in the left menu and select Widgets. Now, like I said, WordPress gives us a lot of different options for widgets to add on our website. Now, a lot of them are going to be useful for you know, different, you know, more useful for some businesses rather than other businesses. So this is pretty cool. We have a few options to where we can place these widgets. So homepage left, homepage middle, and homepage right. So for instance, we can put any of these widgets into these areas of the website. So we can drag in, for instance, a text box and, you know, enter in some content or link to a very, you know, a different page on the website 
from this text box just by dragging this over into this box. So we can drag any of these widgets into this homepage widgets and we can see on our website when you scroll to the bottom that on the home page there will be three areas on the bottom of the site left middle and right where those widgets will appear so that is really cool I think um, and also if the widgets if you know if there's a widget that you had in mind that is not actually in WordPress here WordPress has this area in their plugin section where thousands of developers from around the world have come together basically to make WordPress a better experience, I think, like I've said before, just by adding you know, various things that make WordPress better. For instance, image, you know, plugins that make your images look better or YouTube widgets or various social media widgets that aren't already provided here in this section. So I think that is really cool. The last thing that I wanna show you how to do today is how to get a professional logo onto your website. So this uh, swatch here is the logo that comes with this swatch theme with WordPress from Woo Themes. Now, in an ideal world, you'll probably know Photoshop or you'll have relationships with some good uh, photographers who have a good image that they can create for you to provide to serve as a logo for your website and once you get an image created you will want to come to swatch this section of the dashboard and click on swatch and you'll see this area titled custom logo and you'll just come here upload that logo and that this will replace this logo which will make your website look incredibly professional and ready to go. So I hope that this tutorial on making a website for your business has been really useful to you and I provided a lot of great information and that by now you've got a very good looking website up and ready to go and you start getting a lot of visitors and customers this summer. So I wish you the best of luck and like always, please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions getting started.